which smoked with bloody execution, like Rama's minion carved out his path. To he faked the slave, which ne'er shook his hand, nor made for a welcome. To he unseen him from the nation of chaff, and fixed his head upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentlemen, by the fate, my gashes cry for help. So well thy words become these thy wounds. They snap upon her bow. his eyes, so shall he look that seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Hence came thou, worthy thing. From fight, great king. Where the Norwegian banners flap the sky and pen our people cold. Norway himself with terrible numbers. Assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the fate of Cawdor began a dismal conflict. Point against point, arm against arm, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! No more that thing of Cawdor shall deceive us. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. But he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Do we dare speak about such things? 
Your children shall be king. You shall be king. And they have caught our tomb and did not so. To the self same tune in words. Who's there? The king hath happily received Macbeth. The news of thy success, and when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, everyone that bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defense and poured them down before him. We have come to give thee from our royal master thanks, and for an earnest of a greater honor. He bade me from him, call thee Thane of Cawdor. Hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. But can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who as a Dane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Glamis, and Thane of Cawdor, the greatest is behind. Thanks for our opinions. Do you not wish your children shall be kings when those who gave Thane of Cawdor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown besides Thane of Cawdor, but tis strange, and oftentimes to win us our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Cousins, a word I pray you. Two truths are told, as happy prologues to the swelling act of imperial theme. Thank you, kind gentlemen. Cannot be ill. Cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth I fix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my state of man that function is smothered in surmise. Nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner is racked. If chance may have me king, chance may crown me without my stir. Come what come may, time and hour runs through their office day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Kind gentlemen, give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Come, let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, let us speak our free hearts each other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends! And 
bind us further to you. The rest is labor, which is not used for you. I'll be myself the harbinger, and make joyful the hearing of my wife with the news of your approach. So humbly take my leave, my worthy coddler. The Prince of Cumberland! That is a step on which I must fall down, or else overleap. For in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black, deep desires. The eye wink at the hand. Yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. Strange matters, 
to look like the time, beguile the time. Wear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's made business into my dispatch. We shall speak further. Only look up clear. To all to favor others to be. Leave all the rest to me. If it were done when tis done, to her will it were done quickly. If the assassination might be the be all and the end all here. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that would but teach bloody instructions, which being taught return to plague the inventor. This even handed justice commends the ingredients of our poisoned chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I'm his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should, against the murderers, shut the door and not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan has been so clear in his great office, has borne his faculties so meek that his virtues will plead like angels Trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity shall blow the hard deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to put the side of my intent, only vaulting ambition, which overleaps itself and falls on the other. How now? What news? Here's a sudden. Why have you left the chamber? Have you asked for me? No, you not, he has. We shall proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I brought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which should be worn now on their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. What's the help of the trunk where you trust you? I have slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so free. Such then did I account thy love. Art thou feared to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. No time, no place, but then it here, and yet you would make both and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and no how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my boneless gums from his boneless nipples had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail. But screw your courage, this taking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, or to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I, with wine and song, so convince that memory, the warder of the brain shall be a few. When in swinish sleep their judged natures do lie as in death. What cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? But not upon his spongy officers shall bear the guilt of our great quell. Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal shall compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked those sleepy two of his chamber with blood and used their very daggers that they have done? It? Who dares receive it other? as we shall make our griefs and come a roar upon his death. 
I am settled. And bend up these corporal agents to this terrible feat. Away and mock the time with fair show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. way to in repose. I give you my sword. Who's there? A friend. All's well. I dreamt last night of three strange sisters. To you, they have shown some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon the business. If you would grant the leisure, You shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but keep my bosom franchised and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. Good repose the while. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Dagger which I see before me, its handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. Have thee not? And yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat of respiration. I see thee yet in form as palpable as that which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way I was going in such an instrument I was to use. I see thee still on thy blade in dungeon, gallant blood which was not. There is no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to my eyes now. Nature seems dead. Witchcraft celebrates murder. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. The wolf with a stealthy pace, with Satan's ravishing strides towards his design moves like a ghost. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. He hath not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell.
It was the owl that shrieks the fatal bellman, which gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open, and the serpented grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their tricks. The death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who is there? What? Home! Alack, I am afraid they will wait. And tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I have done the deed. Did thou hear a noise? I heard the owl scream at the cricket's cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I descended? Ah. Hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Malcolm. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one that laugh in his sleep. And now they're crying murder. That they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. But they did say their prayers and address them back to sleep. They're two lodged together. There's one did cry, God bless us, and amen the other. When they had seen me with these hangmen's hands, listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deep. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had the most need of blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These actions must not be thought of after these ways, so it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more! Macbeth does murder sleep! What do you mean? Still a cry to all the house, Sleep no more! Clemens hath murdered sleep, Therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more, Macbeth shall sleep no more! Who was it that thus cried? Why were they saying you do unbound your noble strength to think so very sickly of things? Go. Get some water and wash this filthy witness off your hand. Why did you bring these tigers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I will not do it. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on again, I dare not. And firm of purpose. Give me the daggers. Sleepy the dead are Buddhist pictures. The eye of child of fears of painted devil. If you do bleed, I'll gild the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. When does that knock it? How is it when every noise appalls me? What hands are there? They pluck out my eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash clean this blood from my head? My hand would rather turn the green ocean red. My hands are of your color, but a shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us at the state. How easy is it then? Hark, more knocking. Get in your nightgown, this occasion calls and shows to be watchers. Be you not lost so poorly in your thoughts? To know my deed, to her best not know my soul. Wake Duncan with thy knocking, I would thou couldst. Master stirring, or knocking has awakened him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is that king stirring, worthy fame? Not yet. 
He did command me to time on him. I've almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I'll make so bold to call, for it is my limited service. Goes the king hence today. He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And, as they say, lamentings heard eyed the air. Strange screams of death and prophesizing, with accents terrible of dark combustion, and confused events new hatched to the woeful time. The birds glamoured the live long night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Twas a rough night. Oh, horror, horror, horror! Nor tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke open the Lord's anointed temple and stole back the life of the building. What is it you say? The life? Mean you, his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Awake, awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo, Malcolm, shake off this down! Where I am, there's daggers 
Inman smiles. The near and blood. The near and bloody. Within the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange. But this sore knight hath trifed former knowings. All weddings. Now cease the heavens as trouble of man's act. For it hath played stage by the clock, this day, and yet dark night sprangles that probably. Its night's predominance were they shame that darkness does the face of earth too. When living light kisses, tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousing owl, hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing more strange and certain, beauteous and swift, turned off to nature, broke their stalls, out, contending against obedience, and they would make war with mankind. Tis said they eat each other. They did so. How about the world, Why, see you not? It's not a bit, it's more than money. Those I confess have killed, alas, the day. What good can they intend? They were suffered, not from the king's son, who stolen away the flight which puts upon him suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition doth rather of thine own life's needs. When this most like the sovereignty will fall upon him. He's already named, then gone to school to be invested. No, cousin, I'll to my home and fight. Well, we will go to school to see Macbeth now. May you see things be well done there. The do must our old ropes easier than our new. Thou hast it now. King, Cador, Lemus, all as the witch has promised, and I fear thou playedst most foul before it. Yet it was said it should not stand in my posterity, that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speech is shown, why? Why, on the verities made good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up at home? But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gap at a great feast. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and we will request your presence. Let your highness command upon me to which my duties are forever meant. Right here this afternoon. Yes, my good lord. We would have else missed your great advice, which hath been both grave and prosperous in the day's council. But of that tomorrow, is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time, twixt this and supper. Fill not our feast. My lord, I will not. I hear our bloody cousin Malcolm is bestowed in England, not confessing his cruel murder. But of that tomorrow, hie you to horse, adieu. 
go to my house, will you? Yes, my good lord. I wish your horse was swift and sure of foot. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we'll keep to ourselves alone until supper time. Till then, God be with you. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears and banquo stick deep. In him reign a royalty of nature which holds much to be feared. He has a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There's no being but his that I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. And prophet like they named him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter into my grip that's to be wrenched with unlineal hand, no son of mine succeed. If it be so, then for Banquo's children, have I defiled my mind? For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered only them. Thus, my eternal jewel given to the common enemy of men. Rather than that, come faint into the list and champion me to utterance. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was Banquo who held you so under fortune, when you had thought it had been our innocent self. Do you find your patience so strong that you can let this go? Are you so gospeled to pray for this Good man and his issue, when his hand hath bowed yours to the grave and beggared you forever. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless of what I do despite the world. You know Banquo was your enemy. True, my lord. So was he lying. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could with barefaced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will about it, yet I must not. For certain loves of friends that are both his and mine, who I may not draw. Thence it is that your assistance do I require, masking this business from the common eye. I shall, my lord, perform what you command me. Your spirit shines through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourself. Be acquainted with the perfect spy of the time. The moment is on, for it must be done tonight, and away from the castle. Always thought that I require a cleanness in my work, and to leave no rubs or botches. His son. Flaons, who accompanies him, whose absence is no less material to me than his father's must embrace the fate of that dark night. Resolve yourself apart. I'll come to you or not. I am resolved. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo. Thy soul's flight, if it is to find heaven, must find it out tonight.
not sad, all spent, where desire is got without content. Tis to be safer that which be destroyed than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which indeed have died with them they think on? Things without all remedy which should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scratched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tomb. Ere we shall eat our meals of fear and sleep in affliction of those horrid dreams that shake us nightly. Tis better be with the dead whom we to find our peace have sent to peace than to dwell in the mind's horrid ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done its worst nor steel, nor poison. Nothing can touch him further. Come on, my lord. Gentle, seek all your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I, my love. And so I pray you, let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence both in teeth and tongue. And safe the while that we must lave these honors in our flattering streams and make our faces wizards to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. You know that Banquo and his son Fleot lives. But in them, nature's cup is not eternal. There is comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, there shall be done a deed of dreadful knowledge. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest child, till thou applauds the deed. Come, night, and scarf up the tender eye of the pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear bonds that make me pale. Light thickens, and crow takes wing to rookie wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvelous my words, but be still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee, come with me.
You all know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, a hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Our soul will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her stage, but in time we will require her welcome. Friends. 
Do you like you? Give me your favor, dear friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and help to all. Give me wine, Philippo. I'll drink to the general joy. Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late. Whom, you may say, if it please you, Fleance killed, for Fleance fled. Men must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm to kill his gracious father? Damn fact! How it did grieve Macbeth! I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? The son of Duncan, from whom the tyrant Macbeth holds the crown, lives in the English court and is received by the English King Edward with much grace. There Macduff has gone to pray the Holy King, upon his aid, to weaken an army that, by the help of these with God above, 
To ratify the work, we may again give to our tables neat. Sleep to our nights, free from our feasts and banquet bloody knives. Do faithful homage and receive free honors. All which we pine for now. And this report had so exasperated Macbeth that he prepares for some attempt of war. Sent he for Macduff? He did so, and received an absolute sir, not I. And that well might advise him to a caution, to hold a wisdom his distance can provide. Some holy angel, fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to this our suffering country under hand of curse. I'll send my prayers with you.
sense. Thus harps my fear, all right. But one word more. He will not be commanded. He Had I three ears, I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? Yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of faith. Thou shalt not live. Then I may tell pale faced fear that lies and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this? For your husband, he is noble. 
wise, judicious, and best knows the fifth of the season. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. When we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at worst will cease, or otherwise climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. <sighs> Sarah, your father's dead, and what will you do? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? With what I get, I mean. So do they. Poor bird, thou hast never fear the net. Why should I, mother? Poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead for all your say. Yes, he is dead. And how will that do for a father? <laughs> Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me 20 at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell again. Oh, thou talks with all thy wit, and yet I faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Someone who swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Everyone. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. <laughs> the liars and swearers are fools, for their lies and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang them up. Now God help thee, poor monkey. How will that do for a father? If he were dead, you will weep for him. If not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. Ah, oh, traveler, how now talks. Sir, amen. Stands Scotland, I did. 
Alas, poor country. Almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave were nothing. But who knows nothing has once seen to smile, where sighs and groans and shrieks that rend the air are made, not marked. Where violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy, the dead man's knell is their scarce ask for who, and good men's lives expire before flowers and caps, dying, or are they sicken? Oh, relation, too nice and yet too true. How does my wife? Why? Well. And all my children? Well, too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace? No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Well, how goes it? Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distresses. Be it their comfort. We are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us 10,000 men. Would I could answer this comfort with the like, but I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not latch them. What concern then? The main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. <laughs> I guess at it. Your castle is surprised. Wife and babes savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven, what man? You have pulled your hat upon your brows. Give sorrow words to grief that does not speak. Whispers to the heart bids it break. He has no children! What? Did you say all? Oh, how I all? What? Oh, my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell swoop! Dispute it like a man! I shall do so! I am so feel it as a man! I cannot but remember such things were that were once precious to me. Lord, 
No more of that. Tomorrow at the start. Here is the smell of the blood stain. All the perfumes of her will not sweeten this little hand. Get on your nightgown, look not so pale. I tell you that again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out in one's grave. To bed. To bed. Just knocking at the gate. Come. 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 Give me your hand. like a giant's robe upon a dwarfish thief. To burn him wood! Bring me no more hearts! Let them fly all! To burn them wood, come to Dunsany, I cannot taint! Friends. 
I will not have that. But then there's said curses, not loud, but deep. Mouth on her breath, which the poor heart would fain deny, but dare not. died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a thing. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Creeps. In this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. All our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death.
he says is true, there shall be no flying ants nor tarrying here. Ring the alarm bell! Blow wind! Come wreck! At least we'll die with swords upon our back! Or none. The bird. 